The word dinosaur conjures up all sorts of powerful imagery of fearsome, long-lost animals ruling a forgotten world. An image of prehistoric life and magnificent creatures influenced by almost two centuries of these animals being everywhere in the media. But more than that, it's just a good sounding word. The meaning of the word too, coming from the ancient Greek dinos, terrible, and sauros, reptile lizard, just seems perfect for these animals. Of course, we now have a much greater and wide-ranging understanding of these organisms than we did back when they were named in 1842, and they're clearly so much more than just big scary reptiles, but still, many of these creatures would have been a terrifying sight to behold when alive, and they continue to strike awe and fear into the hearts of people of all ages. Dinosaurs are captivating, and the name is truly iconic. So how was it that they came so close to being called something very, very different? The Pachypodes. To answer that, we have to travel back to England in the 1820s. This was a time of great scientific discovery in the fields of geology and the newly emerging field of paleontology, with findings being made at the seaside town of Lyme Regis by the remarkable Mary Anning of mysterious fossilised animals that appeared to be half fish, half crocodile, now of course known to be ichthyosaurs, subsequently inspiring others to further investigate this evidence of past life in more detail. One of these other pioneers of paleontology was a doctor and geologist named Gideon Mantell, who in his spare time had begun collecting fossils and documenting the geology of the region of southern England he lived in. It was in 1822 that Mantell came into the possession of several teeth, which were possibly discovered by his wife Mary Ann, though some doubt this story and instead argue that they were purchased by Mantell from local quarrymen. Either way, it became clear that these teeth were strange. Mantell recognised that they must have come from a herbivorous reptile, but the astounding thing was that it was clearly huge, much larger than modern herbivorous reptiles such as the iguana. After a few years spent trying to convince other geologists and anatomists of the true identity of these teeth, Mantell was at last successful in giving a name to the creature that they had once belonged to, calling it Iguanodon, meaning Iguana Tooth, in a scientific description published in 1825. Later, more complete discoveries of a similar animal then allowed Mantell to reconstruct the body of this dinosaur, though it would still be a long time before reconstructions more in line with our modern understanding of what this animal looked like appeared. Additionally, the actual fossil these reconstructions were based on has since been reclassified as a different iguanodontian, but nevertheless, some key anatomical features of the animal had been identified. However, as Mantell had been working out what his iguanodon fossils were, another geologist named William Buckland had been studying other fossil bones from another soon-to-be-recognised dinosaur. Mysterious bones uncovered from a quarry at Stonesfield in Oxfordshire had been sent to Oxford's Ashmolean Museum in the late 1700s, with more discoveries continuing to be made at this quarry into the early 1800s too. Buckland was unsure about what kind of animal these fossils may have come from, but after the Napoleonic Wars had ended, the legendary French anatomist Georges Cuvier, considered by some to be the father of paleontology, visited the Ashmolean in 1818 as a guest of Buckland's, and together the pair realised that the bones must have come from some sort of giant lizard-like reptile, which they thought perhaps resembled a monitor lizard. It actually wasn't until 1824 that Buckland officially described and named the animal, calling it Megalosaurus, and beating Mantell by a year to be the first to give a valid name to a non-bird dinosaur. So now two dinosaurs had been named, though they were not recognised as such just yet. But even more discoveries of these remarkable animals continued, with Mantell naming and describing Hyliosaurus in 1833, which we now know to be a genus of Ankylosaur. Then, in 1842, Sir Richard Owen, famed naturalist and the man behind the founding of London's Natural History Museum, published a highly significant work in which he recognised various similarities between the bones of Megalosaurus, Iguanodon and Hyliosaurus, grouping them all together in a new suborder of reptiles he named Dinosauria. Although various other dinosaur genera had been named by that time, they were not recognised as relatives of these animals yet, and these three were therefore the founding taxa that our earliest ideas of what dinosaurs were like were based on. Dinosauria, the terrible lizards, seemed a suiting name for these gigantic extinct reptiles that once roamed the ancient British landscape, despite them of course not actually being lizards. But it turns out that Richard Owen's grouping and naming of these animals was not the only attempt around this time to classify what these great beasts actually were. Another early paleontologist had actually grouped these animals together years before, and later gave them a very different name. Christian Erich Hermann von Meyer was a German paleontologist who contributed greatly to the field in many ways naming Archaeopteryx, the famous first recognised link between non-avian and avian dinosaurs, as well as the sauropodomorph dinosaur Plateosaurus, the late Jurassic pterosaur Rampharhynchus, and many other extinct organisms that lived at a variety of different times in Earth's history. Meyer was a prolific paleontologist and published a great many works on fossil vertebrates as well as invertebrates, and was actually a talented artist as well, illustrating many of the fossils he described himself. 
Interestingly, it was in one of his publications from 1830 where he noted similarities between Mantell's Iguanodon and Buckland's Megalosaurus and proposed that they should be grouped together, over a decade before Owen officially grouped these animals. Some later studies actually even followed Meyer's classification years before the name Dinosauria was published, lending some more support to his classification. However, it wasn't until 1845 that Meyer actually gave a name to his grouping, Pachypoda. With this later naming of the group, Meyer also added some extra members, Hyliosaurus and Platyosaurus, a dinosaur he had described himself. The actual name Pachypoda was a result of the way in which he classified his groupings of extinct reptiles, by the anatomy of their limbs. In addition to the pachypodes, Meyer also considered reptiles with limbs adapted to swimming, such as the plesiosaurs and mosasaurs, to form a different group together, as well as those adapted to flight, the pterosaurs. Another group was also named, but the pachypodes were those animals that he thought had comparable limbs to heavy terrestrial mammals, the pachyderms, hence pachypoda. However, despite Pachypoda being used occasionally by some early paleontologists, the group was so close in its definition to Owen's Dinosauria that it was eventually just considered a synonym, and since it was officially published three years after, Dinosauria took priority. But still, if Meyer had managed to publish his definition and name just a few years earlier, we might be calling the dinosaurs Pachypodes instead. It's an interesting little side note in the early history of this field, and demonstrates the brilliance of these early paleontological pioneers as they started to recognise the shared characteristics and relationships between these incredible extinct creatures. And it's fun to think how different our own popular culture could have been had this name stuck. Would it still have drawn the same fascination from people of all ages as the name Dinosaur does? Perhaps not. It's difficult to think of a more fitting name for these animals, but the history of paleontology was close to being very different. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. A big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Bella Anderson, George Vojtek, Greg Silvernail, Iron Head, Just F. Max, Corey Peterson, Laura Sanborn, Mayer's World, Mike Pace, Persian Boy, Staniforth Hopkins, and Tiffany Trammell. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.